Hi, my name is Athena Pika. I also carry the name Nashmin Tanat, which means go-getter woman. I got that from Jerry Ullman from the Statmic First Nation. Um, I'm a Kwantlen artist. My grandmother is born at Startlip, which is West Saanich. Um, I've been doing Coast Salish art for four years now. I work in many different media, weaving, carving, painting, drawing, ceramics, three different kinds of printmaking, uh, engraving, murals, and other public art pieces. I'm in a show at the Bill Reed Gallery called True to Place. I'm also in the show upstairs called Beaded Nostalgia, uh, and I'm honored to be here today. Uh, I first heard that term, uh, or firm but gentle, when I was learning weaving from Deborah Sparrow when we first started. Um, this tension is really important with weaving, but I find that it's important with everything. Uh, something that I see a lot in Robert Davidson's work is uh, the tension in his work. The forms are balanced uh, and give each other space, but also occupy their own, um, they sort of, each form has their own agency, and um, it's always balanced. And that's something that I learned from artwork that I'm carrying into the rest of my life. Uh, but it was also something that I've been thinking about, uh, I, um, Holactin or Rick Harry, uh, he's my mentor's mentor and I also work with him on a few things and um, he asked me to be there at the uh, Harmony Arts Festival in Ambleside and I've been going for two years now and then I'll be going again this summer and the last time he was asking me if I make time for my family or something and um, I said I do but um, you know, it was something I was thinking about because he always makes time for his family, his artwork, uh, and also helping others because that's kind of the foundation of Coast Salish culture, and which is Coast Salish artwork, language, everything. Uh, it's all about holding each other up. And I was talking to someone about that, like, what, what makes Salish culture so different? And um, not just in things more straightforward like language and artwork but um, you'll see it in ceremony too or at events we're always holding our hands up for each other literally to hold each other up and through these things I've been learning to also hold yourself up um, so I've been exploring balance in my work um, not just in a design sense but in a thematic sense um, to remind myself to teeter back to center all the time. Um, my carving teacher, Aaron Nelson Moody from Squamish, uh, he was in the Seagoing Society for quite a few years and he was talking about when he first joined and someone at the other side of the canoe would move and you'd feel it and everybody would freak out because they weren't used to it. And then uh, through more experience being on the canoe journeys and just in the canoe in general, um, he would feel someone move and the whole boat would rock a little bit but we, everybody understood that we would teeter back to center as long as we stayed balanced. And so those are things that I think about, like, okay, as long as we all do our best to stay balanced ourselves, we will teeter back to center. And something that I use to bring myself back is artwork in many different forms. Um, and so learning from my mentors and teachers, I always ask them for advice, like, what do you do when uh, you're doing a workshop and things get really difficult? Or what do you do when you're sort of feeling down and out and are sick of commissions or something and then they say oh I just you know work on my own thing and um, bring myself back to center in different ways um, so yeah that's what my artwork's sort of about right now These pieces are sort of to represent uh, different sides of my family as well. Um, so Kwantlen is along the river, so we honor the river in different ways and um, recognizing the creatures of the river, of the river world. Uh, a lot of themes in the show are about uh, portal and so to me um, going into water is a form of um, like stepping into a portal, whether you're swimming or going for ceremony or um, just doing it to unwind. Um, to me, it's a, it's a form of uh, going through a portal into a different world where 
um, you are once again a visitor and to respect the world around you. And I love swimming in the ocean as well. And Sartlip is a uh, saltwater uh, peninsula. And um, I wanted to kind of highlight these two sides of my life because I'm learning more about my family at Sartlip and I'm learning more about my family at Kwantlen and I'm doing my best to spend time with both of them um, and learning more about the history of my grandmother's journey. Uh, her mom passed away when she was very young and so she was adopted by close family friends at Kwantlen and so she navigated spending time in both areas and learning teaching from both areas and um, learning the history and harmony in different senses. So saltwater cultures are heavily, like all the stories are around navigation and uh, freshwater communities. Um, it's a little different, but it, it is about navigation, but in a different sense. And the sturgeon, they face a lot of troubles right now because there's also sport fishing for sturgeon, or they say catch and release, but uh, it's very traumatic for these animals because um, they live in the bottom of the river, they cruise really slowly, they like to take their time, um, and there's also higher pressure at the bottom of the river. So when they're getting pulled and yanked up out of the water, the pressure change is very traumatic, being out of the water obviously, uh, but also getting pulled around by fishermen. Um, Sturgeon are very ancient fish. Uh, they can live up to over 100 years old. Um, they, they're very small when they're pups, but they can grow 14 feet long or bigger. And I've heard lots of stories about sturgeon coming up under boats and cruising by, and they didn't know that it was a sturgeon. They thought, why is that shadow moving? And things like that, where um, these ancient beings are being disrespected due to sport fishing and things, and uh, the orcas are, you know, facing a lot of trouble right now because of obviously pollutants, but the temperature changes and, um, you know, everything. Everything is affecting these beings. And uh, not to bring it around to canoe analogies again, but uh, you know, everything we do ripples out into the universe. That's something my elders talk about all the time, um, and so we need to make sure that we're doing good to ripple out good into the universe and um, you know the older I get the more I see these effects show up and the more I want to be um, not just accountable but uh, what's the word do things with intention uh, carry yourself with intention treat others with intention um, and also just be respectful to everything around you they say all my relations but they're not kidding you know it's not just uh, human relations, but your plant relatives, your fish relatives, um, your sky relatives, everything. Everything is connected. And so um, keeping that mindset will help you carry yourself in a good way, but also uh, provide balance in your life, I think, too. It's getting out of that mindset where it's very individual, but if we think about others and we're living in harmony, then um, it changes how you navigate the world. Thank you for listening today. I hope you get a chance to check out this show. It'll be up till March 2023. It's at the Bill Reed Gallery. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I, there's some amazing artists in this show, uh, some of my favorite artists ever actually. And so yeah, I hope you get to check out my work. Um, if you'd like more information about my work, you could visit my website, athenapika at work.com. And uh, I also have Instagram as well, at athenapika. <laughs>